Hi, and welcome to today's Engaging for Missouri webinar. I'm Alice Roach from the Division of Applied Social Sciences at the University of Missouri, and I'll be your host today. With each of these 30-minute webinars, we intend to share research-based insights that leaders like you can apply in your own work to benefit and strengthen the state's agriculture and food system, hospitality sector, and communities. Today, Dr. Rebecca Mott will speak about the North Central Farm and Ranch Stress Assistance Center. Before I invite Dr. Mott to begin, I want to share a few housekeeping items. First, we'll close today's presentation with a question and answer session. Those of you who connected today via your computer may submit your questions in the chat screen. If you join today by phone, then you may email me your questions at roacham at missouri.edu. Second, all attendees are muted and may not start their video. Third, if you encounter any technical problems during today's webinar, then please let me know by either submitting a comment in the chat screen or you can also send me an email at roacham at missouri.edu and I'll do my best to help you troubleshoot. Fourth, we'll make a recording of today's presentation available. You can look for an email from Zoom that shares more about where you can access that recording sometime tomorrow. You can also find an archive of all of our previous Engaging for Missouri webinars on our Division of Applied Social Sciences YouTube channel. So with that, we'll transition to the topic of today's webinar, which is titled the North Central Farm and Ranch Stress Assistance Center, Exp Expanding Stress Management and Mental Health Resources and Services. Presenting is Dr. Rebecca Mott, who is an Assistant Ex Extension Professor in our Agricultural Education and Leadership Program. So thank you, Dr. Mott, for being here to present today. If you could please unmute your microphone and start your video, then we can begin today's presentation. Thank you, Alice. I'm happy to be here with all of you today. Um, this is a, a topic that is near and dear to my heart. And so uh, it means a lot to be, to be asked to, to come and visit with you all. So I'll give you just a little bit of uh, background information about myself. Uh, like Alice said, I am an assistant extension professor at the University of Missouri. I actually have a split appointment. I work um, about 50% of my time with University of Missouri Extension, where I do mostly program evaluation work for a variety of grants. Most um, of those are, are either involving agriculture, youth development programs, or both. And then with the other half of my time, I teach courses in the Department of Ag Education and Leadership at the university. So I was actually born in Warren County, Missouri, raised on a family farm there. And um, came to the University of Missouri in 1993 and first earned a bachelor's degree in music education here, uh, of all things. Actually, I think one of my past uh, music students is on the call today, which is kind of fun. Um, anyway, about six years ago, I came back here to the university and began working with extension at that time. And so it's it's been a very fun path. Um, I've enjoyed all the time that I've spent in rural Missouri. Um, working with rural folks in various capacities, and, and that also helps to make this project near and dear to my heart. So my goal for you today is to help you walk away with a little bit more background information about exactly what the North Central Farm and Ranch Stress Assistance Center is. Um, I expect that in the near future, you're going to be hearing about it and, and seeing it more in some publications around the state. We're excited about what's going on and I, I wanna help make you familiar with the work that the center is doing. Um, second of all, I wanna provide you with some resources that you can use in the work that you do. Many of you on here work with producers on a very regular basis. And so you're a really important link uh, to help address the challenge that we're currently facing uh, with, with stress and mental health challenges in the agriculture sector. And finally, I want to help you think today a little bit about some ways that you personally can get involved in addressing farmer and rancher stress and mental health. So I encourage you to think back for a little bit about where you were in the spring of 2020. So I'm guessing that for most of you, uh, that was a pretty memorable time. That is a pretty memorable time. And you probably have some, some pretty vivid thoughts about what you were doing. Uh, maybe part of that was, you know, you were spending time trying to figure out how to do your work in a whole new way. Um, you know, COVID certainly caused a lot of new stresses 
uh, or, or magnified stresses that, that agriculturalists had been facing anyway. And I remember very vividly where I was um, in the spring. I was, I was home working um, a lot of time off my back patio, which was certainly not normal for me. And, and that's exactly where I was uh, the day that I got a call from some folks in the University of Illinois. Um, I remember sitting there with my laptop. I was actually watching the cows get a drink for the afternoon. And I got this call asking if I would consider serving as an evaluator on a grant that a, a group was putting together um, aimed to address farmer and rancher stress and mental health. So um, the reason I think that that is so vivid to me is that it seemed very meaningful uh, to be in that setting when that, that call happened. My own family had been touched um, by farmer mental health challenges. And so this work is especially important and meaningful to me. And I was really glad to be able to say yes to being part of that proposal, along with my colleague, uh, Dr. Kim Keller, who is another assistant extension professor here. Uh, she works in the nutrition and health area. So our role in this proposal was to develop ways that uh, we could measure to what extent the program objectives would be met um, to figure out some ways to make sure that we were reporting what would be happening with the program to stakeholders and, and overall to assist with accountability. Uh, let me give you a little bit of information about uh, the grant that funded this proposal and, and how it came to be. So uh, this grant was funded by the USDA NIFA and it was called the Farm and Ranch Stress Assistance Network uh, Grants Program. It was actually reauthorized by the 2018 Farm Bill uh, with the goal of providing stress assistance for folks in farming, ranching, and, and other ag-related occupations. Um, the idea was that it would hopefully help improve behavioral health awareness, uh, literacy around mental health in the ag community and more favorable outcomes, not only for farmers, but for their families as well. So early in the fall, our group learned that the USDA NIFA had indeed awarded the grant to our group. Um, you'll see here, this, this map illustrates that we are the group from the North Central region. Um, and this is a 12 state collaboration that serves ag producers and stakeholders in the entire North Central region. So extension from the states of Iowa, Indiana, Kansas, Michigan, uh, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North Dakota, Ohio, South Dakota, and Wisconsin are all involved in this project. And so is the Central State Center for Ag Safety and Health, as well as the National Agribility Program. The, um, the lead on this grant is Josie Rudolphy, um, who is a professor in um, Ag and Biological Engineering at the University of Illinois. And she, um, she along with her colleague, Courtney Cuthbertson, um, have the, the big task of facilitating and coordinating this gigantic project. So you also are very familiar with some Missouri leads on this project, I'm sure. They include Karen Funkenbush, who's the director of the Missouri Agribility Project, and Extension Professor Kathy Dodhage. Um, you should also know that we have Extension professionals around the whole state working on this project. So whatever county you're in, it is very, very likely that your own extension faculty there will be contributing to this project as well. I'd like to take a moment to talk about why this work is so important. So I'm sure most of you know that ag producers in the US experience high levels of stress, of course, from just a huge array of factors, uh, including you know, long work hours, work that is often very isolating in nature, um, variable weather conditions that impact crops and livestock, um, you know, the, the immense farm financial decision-making that's involved, fluctuating markets, government policies, you know, and we could go on to name so many more, of course. So it's not shocking then um, 
to know that producers have higher psychological distress than the general population. They also have higher rates of depression, anxiety, and suicide. Um, and that, that impacts not only the overall well-being of those producers and their families, but also their farming practices as well. We also know that if excessive stress is not dealt with effectively, then those who are involved in production are much more likely to be injured on the job, um, more likely to miss work. It makes sense that the quality of life is not going to be great, um, not uncommon to have thoughts about suicide and may even experience premature death um, due to a variety of, of different diseases. Um, and we know that stress impacts not only physical health, not only mental health, but also the likelihood of substance use, family, relax, family relationships, and like I said earlier, the, the overall success of the farming operation. So as people involved in the ag industry who work with farmers and ranchers on a regular basis, um, I'm sure most of you know that reaching out for help for farmers can be super challenging. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. First of all, it, for farmers, it feels like there's never a break or a good time to seek care. Uh, the work just never seems to let up. In addition to that, though, farmers tend to be pretty self-sufficient people. Um, many pride themselves on being able to solve about any pro problem that the world throws at them uh, on their own. So there's kind of a stigma around seeking help. Farming is a culture where stress and where mental health challenges have historically been seen as weaknesses. Um, but as you can see by this map, there's more to it than just this. Most counties in the US face a deficit of healthcare professionals, especially in the area of mental health. In fact, all 99 of Missouri's rural counties have a shortage. So Alice is going to pull up our polling feature for us. And I'm gonna ask you all to participate here for a minute. If you were to guess how many counties in Missouri do you think have no mental health care providers? Just a reminder, we have 99 rural counties in the state, 114 counties total. How many counties do you think have no mental health care providers? in the state of Missouri. Feel free to take a guess on your polling feature and let's see what we come up with. All right, if you're still polling, feel free to keep polling, but I think most of you have answered. And I guess I have some good news for you. Um, it's not quite as bad as many of you guessed. Some of you, 11% of you are spot on here. So 57 of our 99 rural counties have no mental health care professionals at all. So that means that in order to seek help, uh, many folks in rural areas have to go a pretty long way. And of course, we have not even begun to talk about the cost of health care, which we all know is also a barrier uh, to a lot of folks for being able to get the help that they might need. So all of these factors make getting help really challenging. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what the North Central region is doing to try to address some of these barriers. So this graphic depicts the five areas that are required uh, by this grant. Um, all, of the, all of the folks who receive this type of grant have to uh, use training programs of some sort, uh, telephone hotlines, 
some clearinghouse website or webinar type work, um, support groups and professional behavioral health services. And I'll tell you a little bit more about exactly how that's working in the North Central region in just a few minutes. Um, I do want to go ahead and mention a few items though. First of all, you know, there are many of you who have probably daily contact with producers. Um, you may see things when you're working with producers that are concerning to you, um, but you may not yet feel comfortable addressing those concerns about stress that you see or about signs of, of mental distress that you're seeing. And these training programs that are being offered as part of this grant can be extremely helpful um, to help you become competent and maybe more importantly, confident in your competence to have difficult conversations with the folks that you're working with. And the other piece I wanna highlight for you right now is that the clearinghouse that um, is going to be launched by the North Central Region is actually officially set to launch on May 1st. And what this is going to do is it's gonna bring the best materials from all 12 of those states involved in this grant together in one place. And all of those items then will be accessible to everyone in the North Central Region. So we're super excited to have that happen. And I'm going to encourage you to watch for an announcement when that link becomes available. Um, I'm sure you will see a lot about that in the very near future. I thought you might be also interested in knowing exactly how Missouri Extension is contributing to this effort. Um, each of the 12 states are doing slightly different things, which is some of the beauty of this project, I think. So, MU Extension professionals in all of Missouri's 114 counties, as well as a large network of healthcare and even some ag groups will collaborate to provide uh, services through this grant um, and to create and share resources. So as part of the project, MU Extension faculty will train to become certified instructors in several different programs including mental health first aid. Um, this is a program that is focused on um, teaching people how to recognize signs of mental health or substance use challenges and helping equip them with the language and the, the skills to respond to that sort of thing appropriately. That's about an eight hour training. Um, another one that you will actually have the opportunity to sign up to attend if you're interested today is QPR. That stands for Question, Persuade, and Refer. Um, that's a, a one hour long training that's, that's going to be available by webinar. And um, it really helps to give people the skills that they need to be able to intervene in an emergency situation um, if you expect that someone may be thinking about suicide. Another one that MU Extension is doing is called Taking Care of You. This one is a multi-session program that focuses on stress management um, and it's built uh, on the theory of positive psychology. And again, that one is available um, online and there also is a face-to-face -face version of that one. So watch for that. Also, Coming soon will be some death, dying, and bereavement courses offered by our state extension specialist, Tichel Bordere, who is a nationally recognized researcher in the area um, of loss and grief. And finally, another new exciting thing is a um, telehealth type, type approach to working with farmers and um, it, it allows the psychological recovery uh, center here at the University of Missouri um, to work with farmers up to five times by phone or by video conference to address stress. And so that's another one that if you're interested in, we're gonna be able to share uh, some ways for you to get involved. 
So there are a lot of different ways that you can become involved in learning more about farmer rancher mental health and, and helping to address this challenge. Uh, some of those include being aware of resources that are out there and being willing to share them, attending some trainings, like I mentioned earlier, uh, so that you are prepared to act when you encounter someone who may need some help, and then advocating for the importance of physical and mental health for farmers. So on this slide are a couple of ways that you can get started immediately if you're interested. Um, I had mentioned the QPR training, and that one is actually being offered right now. If you go to that link, you can sign up online um, to attend a one hour training session in April or May. You will receive a certificate for that if that's something that any of you need for professional development purposes. And it's going to equip you with some really great skills uh, to help someone you encounter who may be having thoughts about suicide. Um, the next piece there is the um, newsletter link. We are in the process of sharing out all the great work that's being done in these 12 states around farmer rancher mental health. And so if you want to stay um, very informed and, and be able to access new resources as they come, just email me and I'll make sure that you get on that newsletter list. So you'll also that way be sure to see when the um, when the, the website launches where all the new materials are housed. The third resource has a lot of different valuable items in it. Uh, this is a document that was created by University of Missouri Extension. It has a handy checklist to follow if you encounter someone that you think um, needs to be referred to someone for some assistance. It also has numbers of helplines and of hotlines, including the Iowa Concern Hotline. And I think that line is, is really helpful. Um, although it is out of Iowa because of this grant now, it is available not only to Missourians, but farmers and ranchers in all 12 of those states who are involved. And the neat thing about the Iowa Concern Hotline is it's staffed by people who have training um, in counseling, but they also have a background in agriculture. And so this gives farmers then the ability to be able to talk to someone who understands them and their way of life, and it makes it a little bit easier to seek help. I wanna thank all of you for joining me on this webinar today. Like I said, this is a topic that hits home for me, and I'm sure it does for many of you on the call as well. Um, it's exciting to see the ag industry pull together to figure out ways to address these challenges. And I think, um, you know, opening up avenues to talk about this is a really great place to start. And I, I very much appreciate um, that the Engaging for Missouri webinar series is doing just that. So as we close today, I'd like to invite you all to share in the chat box how you plan to use some of the information that you learned from today's webinar. Um, this can either be a comment to, to the entire group, or if you feel more comfortable, please share a comment with me. Um, you know, maybe that's looking at one of the resources I shared today. Maybe you've decided that you're interested in attending a QPR training later in the month or in May. But whatever it is, folks, this information truly has the ability to save lives. Um, I've used this information. I continue to use this information and it works. Um, I encourage you to commit to doing something, no matter how small it may seem, to address the challenge that we are facing with stress and mental health in our ag community. And I encourage you all to start at the place where you're the most comfortable and then challenge yourself as time goes on uh, to continue developing your knowledge and your skills in these areas. So thank you again for your attendance. Um, it's been a pleasure and I hope that you're walking away with a real basic understanding about what the North Central Farm and Ranch Stress Assistance Center does. Um, I hope you feel like you have access to some helpful new resources, and I hope you now have some ideas about some things that you can do to get involved 
um, to address farmer and rancher stress and mental health in your own corner of the state, wherever that may be. What questions do you all have for me today? Thank you, Becky, for that really important um, overview of the center. And it's great to hear about all the work that you all have planned going forward. Um, if you do have a question, we do have a few minutes to take questions. So you can go ahead and add that into the chat screen. We do have one here um, that's talking about the um, US healthcare system being so expensive. So is the project accounting for this? And if so, how can we balance how we expand and improve healthcare in rural areas with the cost that it takes to do that in an already expensive system? Hmm. I wish I had all the answers to that for sure. Um, the, the good news about this project is that because of this grant, uh, these trainings are offered to farmers and ranchers at no cost at this time. Um, one, of the, one of the ones that I mentioned to you all, um, and I can, I can certainly make sure that this is something we share with you after, after this webinar, um, is that the University of Missouri, the, uh, the psychological services have, have partnered with MU Extension to be able to create these um, series of teletherapy sessions. Um, you know, that one is an example of what could be a very costly um, uh, intervention that the grant is making available to farmers and their families absolutely free of charge. It's one of those areas um, where you know you, you go online and, and you fill out a fill out a form asking for help there and, and you can certainly get it. Um, like I said, there's there's not an easy answer to the cost. I, I do think that there is a lot of promise in, in the telehealth area for sure, um, especially when we look at that map, right? And we see the distance that so many folks have to travel. Um, I also think there is a lot of power in starting to build networks where people feel comfortable having these difficult conversations. Uh, we for sure know that we're, we're fighting a stigma, um, but I'm sure you all have, have heard it. You know, you run into people all the time where they have faced this challenge in their family um, and people just don't talk about it. And so I think um, working to to make this part of a, a, a more natural thing to talk about is, is also, you know, going to really go a long way. Yeah, good points there. Um, getting back to the skills for psychological uh, recovery, how does someone qualify for those telehealth trainings? Is it just a filling out a simple form or can you talk more about yeah. that? It absolutely is. And so um, there is a, a, form, a form for adults. There's a form for children. Um, it's available online. And it is simply a matter of, of signing up. And then at that point, um, they will determine uh, how much help is needed. So depending on what it is, somebody may have three sessions, somebody may have four sessions, or they may go the full five. Um, some of these other um, workshops I mentioned, like the Taking Care of You, um, of course, that's available to everyone, and that will work on a, a different set of skills. Um, those are designed uh, to help build resiliency and, and handle stress a little bit more. So lots of different tools available for lots of different purposes, and we just hope that folks will take advantage of some of these. Sure. Uh, one of the resources that you mentioned earlier was the clearinghouse that you expect will launch sometime soon. Can you talk about the types of materials that will be included in that? And then where can we also watch for the announcement of that clearinghouse when it's available for us to access? Sure. Well, for sure, for sure. If you all don't want to miss anything, send me your email and I'll make sure that you get on our newsletter list so that you're, you are the first to hear. I'm sure that MU Extension will have a big announcement. The university will have a big announcement when this clearinghouse launches on May 1. Uh, and like I said, what that clearinghouse is going to have is the best of the best from all 12 states. Um, and I talked, you know, specifically about some of the programs that Missouri has. But the neat thing is that all the states are addressing this in a slightly different way and have been for a number of years. But what this grant has allowed us to do is to pool these resources together, to share ideas with each other, um, to strengthen programs and to make them available across the whole region. So they're not just state specific anymore. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Becky, for sharing today's presentation. And thank you to our audience for joining us. Uh, we will make the slides available. Um, so there were some links that Becky included in the presentation, so you'll have those available. Um, we'll also make the recorded copy available to you, um, and it will be on YouTube. When you exit Zoom, you'll see a post-webinar survey will load in your browser. Please consider responding as we'll use the results to improve the webinar experience and also brainstorm future webinar topics. We'll host our next Engaging for Missouri webinar on Wednesday, May 19th. Christy Livingston from the Missouri Institute of Cooperatives will moderate a panel with leaders from three co-ops, FCS Financial, DFA, and the SEMO Electric Cooperative. They'll discuss the co-op model and co-op's role in Missouri, so we hope that you join us then. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you have a great afternoon. Thank you again, Becky. Thank you, Alice.